This is the Speed D Adamatic from the 1960s. These have eight columns of input digits. These plastic keys go from one to five. Over here is a big plastic button that clears the machine. Here's the answer display under this clear plastic. And there's the name right there in the plastic. If you want to know what this thing's made of, I have one word, just one word. Black. Ah, forget it. This machine was sold by CMI, which stands for Chadwick Miller Importers. This is the same outfit that made the Chadwick adding machine that I did another video about. Can you see the resemblance? Actually, Chadwick didn't make either of these. They were just an importer of all kinds of random stuff from Japan. I guess anything they could get cheap, they paid to make them in Japan and sold them in America. Both of these devices were similar to more expensive metal machines from Europe and the U.S. The Chadwick adding machine is just like the Resulta, the Summit, and lots of others. And the Speed d is just like my torpedo adding machine that I did another video about. Actually, the Speed d is a closer relative with this machine by Contex. I don't have one, but I like the looks of it. You know, my favorite thing about this Contex is how the buttons just float there. You can see the table right through the machine. I doubt that's useful for anything, but I think it's a great design concept. On the Speed D, they decided not to go with the whole bottomless floating keyboard. See, there's no empty space here. And on the bottom, oh wait, actually the keys are floating. For some reason they decided to make the keys big squares so they fill up all the space around them. But actually they're still floating and there is no bottom. I guess they didn't want you to be able to see the table through the keyboard like on the context. But I liked seeing the table. Anyway, this is a key-driven adding machine, which means the numbers get added as soon as you press the keys. This is the same idea as the comptometer, which I did some videos about. You're meant to type with all your fingers at once, so you can do computations really fast with this thing. Like if I want to type in this number, you just do this. It took me a few seconds to get my fingers in position for that, but with some practice you can get pretty good at it. Anyway, to add numbers, you just type them in one after another. So this would look like this. Do you see how fast that was? I challenge you to add those two numbers on an electronic calculator that fast. You can't even type those numbers in that fast. I had to practice that one several times to do it that fast. It isn't easy to do well, but a trained comptometer operator can do these kinds of additions really fast. On the back here, you can see four screws. I got my fabulous screwdriver here, so I thought maybe I should open it and take a look. But then I decided, obviously, I should open it and take a look. You can't really see much here, but each number is on its own little strip of plastic, and they all have different heights. Then I discovered something truly exciting. The mechanism inside isn't actually attached to the plastic case at all. It's just being held in place by that plate on the bottom that I removed. So you can actually pull the whole thing out. And once you got that out, these two big rubber slides can also just pull off and you can detach the shield that goes in front of the digits. The thing more or less still works like this, which is pretty great. Actually, I wasn't expecting it, but this is probably the most easily disassembled machine that I own. Chalk another one up for the Japanese wizards who designed this. Just like the other Chadwick machine, it's a device that does what it does perfectly with a minimum of fuss. And even the inner workings of the machine fit together beautifully without any unnecessary nonsense. Just by removing these four screws, you can fully expose every part of the mechanism. And that's a killer feature if you ask me. You can push down until it hits the metal bar here and you can even hear the little clicks. The one button only goes down a little bit and it clicks once. The two button clicks twice, you get the idea. What's up with these numbers? They only go up to five. This is mostly to make the machine smaller. There's no tricks here. If you want to type in a nine, you just do a four and then five, or five and then four. This gives you a bit more work to do in your head. If you need to type in a 7, say, you have to think for a moment to do a 4 and a 3, or a 5 and a 2, or two twos and a 3, I guess. Leaving out the higher numbers makes the machine smaller, but there's more to it than that. 
The folks who designed the comptometer actually studied this and they found that skilled operators could compute faster and more accurately this way. See, the true comptometer supermen, or more often superwomen, they would save time by never hitting buttons above five, even if the keyboards went all the way up. Because shifting your hands to the top of the machine takes time and introduces more opportunities to mess up. Instead of reaching up to hit the 8, it's easier and faster to just hit the 4 twice. Now, I'm not that good at it, but maybe I could do pretty well if I practiced a lot. There were people back then who trained for years and must have had some amazing skills that are basically lost forever now. As far as I know, there isn't any video footage anywhere of a real skilled operator using one of these machines really fast. That's a bit of a shame. I imagine it's a similar set of skills for people who are really good at video games. You know there's this website called Twitch where people stream video of themselves playing video games and other people can watch them. Like this guy, he plays Super Mario Brothers really fast. I bet if Twitch existed back in the 1920s, you would have had people on webcams trying to add numbers really fast on their comptometers. There'd be like online record boards, Smack talk, lots of yelling. I hear some of these video game streamers actually can make real money that way. Actually, people can make money making videos on YouTube, too. Not me.